Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Surprise, surprise, look who's back from the dead. That's right, it's our Nexus 6P. Google has released a December security update for this guy, even though I guess they guaranteed security updates kind of ordeal has finished last month. But it's still nice to get OTA updates and uh, I guess, yeah, security updates for our 6P because I know a few people who are still using this thing and it hasn't died on them yet. So to begin, we'll be using the factory images this month and we'll also be using yeah, fast boot. So let's get started. We need to download a few things and make sure we have the latest version of these things. As if you have the older ones, it tends to bring up a few problems. But I guess not with some older devices, but anyways, it's also always good to have the latest version of these things. So first up is the SDK platform tools for our operating system. This is just ADB and fast boot, uh, these command line tools that help us communicate with our phones in different modes. So you'll need to download this Next up, you'll also need to download the factory image for our 6P. So on the right hand side, we can click on Angular for Nexus 6P. And we can scroll down all the way to the bottom, where we'll find a December build of Android 8.1 Oreo. So click on the blue download link here. And next up, we'll also want to make sure that we have the latest version of TWRP. So let's just scroll down to the download links here, and make sure we have the latest version, which was released five months ago. That's cool. Just make sure you have the latest version there. And for those with the boot loop of death, now if you're going to ask if you have the boot loop of death, you probably don't have it. So ignore this part. But if you know you have it, you'll want to make sure you have, of course, the workaround injector and also the patched version of TWRP. I will be showing you how to do this for those with the boot loop of death. And I'll let you know when you can ignore some certain steps if you don't have the boot loop of death. But I think it should be quite self-explanatory. So download the files that you need from Osmosis's Osmods. And last but not least, we'll also want the latest version of Magisk. You can use the stable or beta version. I already have the beta version downloaded, so I'm just going to be using that. But it doesn't matter which version you use for the 6P. So I've downloaded all the files here. You can see I have the factory image, the beta version of Magisk. Now, of course, these two files are for those with the boot loop of death, the ones that I've highlighted and the platform tools. So if you don't have the boot loop of death, you'll just have the normal version of TWRP, a newer version as well. But uh, for those who you know do have the boot loop of death, they'll need to use this patched version here. I'll also be offering my patch pre-patched boot images if you don't want to root your phone. So you can also um, flash those instead. And there'll be a link down below in the more info as well. Now to get started, we just need to open up the platform tools as usual. Let's just extract the entire platform tools out just like that. Now if you've already extracted them somewhere or added it to your path environment variable, you can just skip all this. But just ensure that you have the latest version and I'll show you how to check that if you're interested. And once you've extracted that, I want you to open up the platform tools folder. And in the address bar, I need you to type in cmd, or for those running Windows at least. And that'll open up a command prompt window with the directory already changed to where the platform tools are located. So we can straight up run ADB or fastboot from here. Alternatively, you can use something like um, PowerShell, or if you're on a completely different operating system, you can definitely use the terminal or whichever kind of shell you want to use on your operating system. But just make sure you can run the exes like ADB and fastboot. So we need to go back into our Android folder, and we're going to open up the factory image. Inside the factory image, and we're going to extract the bootloader and radio images outside like that. We're going to open up the image zip file inside. And from there we're just going to extract the boot, system and vendor images outside just like that. Okay, now everything we need is extracted. Now before we, uh, we can close all the zip files here. And also, we'll need to copy over or ensure that Magisk and the workaround injector, if you have the boot loop of death, is copied over to your device. So that's also a good time to do it now. So I'm just going to change the USB option to transferring files as you would normally do. And then I'm just going to copy these files onto my internal storage. So you can see I actually have a few of them already in there. So that's now my workaround BLOD workaround injector. And that's the version of Magis that we're going to flash. So just make sure you have the files that you need to flash on your phone. Now once you have that done, it's very important that you disable any substratum overlays right now. 
just in case something messes up with the new security update, it's always good to disable those. And also, uh, if you are using Exposed, you might want to disable some of the modules there before uh, rebooting for the update. So once you have everything kind of sorted out, we need to reboot our phone into the bootloader. So we're going to tap on restart and hold the volume down button. And just keep holding it until our phone boots into the bootloader. It may take a while, so just keep holding it. And once we're in the bootloader, we can now go ahead, come back to our computer, and we can type in our first command. So I guess we'll just check the version of ADB that's installed, especially for those who already have it on their computers. So if we type in ADB version, we should see that it's on 1.0.40, and there's a build code version, and also where it is currently installed. So make sure that matches, I guess, where you intend to open up your command prompt and which ADB version you want to use. But as long as it's 1.0.40, uh, you should be fine. So we're going to first up do fast boot devices, like so, and that should return our serial number here. And once it does, we can continue with flashing the updated bootloader image. To do that, we're just going to type in fast boot flash bootloader. Leave a space after the bootloader and drag in the bootloader image, not the boot image. Make sure it says bootloader and hit enter. Once that's done, we're going to restart our phone back into the bootloader. You can use the options here on our phone to reboot bootloader. You can use the volume buttons to navigate and press the power button to select it. So I'm going to reboot my phone back into the bootloader here. And once it shows that green Android screen, we can go ahead and update the radio image. And we're going to type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space after the word radio and drag in the radio image and hit enter. Once that is done, we're going to go ahead and reboot our phone back into the bootloader again. So I'm just going to quickly navigate to that menu option and just press the power button and just wait for it to return back to the bootloader. And once that's done, we're going to flash the rest of the images and we're going to start with the boot image. So we're going to type in fast boot, flash, boot like so, and then drag in the boot image, not the bootloader image, and hit enter. The next image we're going to flash now is the system image. So we're going to type in fast boot flash system, leave a space after the system, and then drag in the system image. Since this image is quite big, it's almost two gigabytes, it's 1.86, uh, we're going to give it a moment here, and I'm just going to fast forward this until we finish flashing the system image. Okay, now the system image has finished flashing, we're going to flash the vendor image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash vendor and leave a space after the word vendor, whoops, a daisy, and drag in the vendor image and then hit enter. It's still quite big, but not as big as the system image, so it shouldn't take that long. Just give it a sec here for it to finish. And we're done. So the last thing we want to do is make sure we have the latest version of TWRP installed. Now, if you already um, obviously rooted your phone before, you can probably use the same TWRP that's already installed currently since we haven't replaced it with the stock recovery image. But just in case you need to reflash the TWRP image, you can type in the words fastboot and then flash recovery. Leave a space after recovery and drag in the appropriate TWRP image you want to flash. Now, of course, if you don't have the boot loop of death, you just flash the regular TWRP image they can download officially from their website. Otherwise, you can download this modified one from Osmosis's basket build. And that's only if you have the boot loop of death. So just flash that. And once you've flashed everything, we can now go ahead and boot our phone into the recovery. So to do that, we can navigate down until it says recovery mode and then press the power button. And our phone should slowly but surely boot into TWRP. Now upon entering TWRP, you will be asked to decrypt your data partition, potentially, unless TWRP has saved the decryption somewhere. But we'll see in just a second here. Nope, but if it does ask you for a pin, password, or pattern to decrypt data, just enter your lock screen pattern. And once you have done that, you'll be greeted with this lovely menu screen. And of course, this is where we get to reroute our phone and flash anything that we needed to. Since we're all on the same page here, let's just flash Magisk.
Okay, so we flash Magus now, and if you don't need to flash the boot loop of death workaround, or if you don't need to flash anything else for that matter, you can tap on reboot system. But of course, with those with the boot loop of death, you'll need to flash the workaround injector now. And this will patch our boot image, so the one that's been, I guess, flashed with the Magisk, and also our recovery. But that's already patched, so it shouldn't change too much there. Okay, now that's done, we can just restart our system here and wait for our phone to boot up. And then we should just double check that we are still rooted. Let's just have a look at whether the safety net is passing or not. And I guess we'll have a quick look at our CPU status. But I guess if you do have the boot loop of death, your phone wouldn't turn on if it wasn't patched properly anyways. So we'll just wait for our phone to turn on here and we'll be right back. Okay, so our phone's booted up now, very quickly. And it's just going to finish our update. Let's have a look at Magisk Manager. And we are, yes indeed, I've rooted. I'm not connected to the internet, that's why you don't see the other options, so... Okay, so I've just connected my phone to the internet here. So we can just have a look at our safety net status while it downloads that extra code. And yep, yeah, we can see we're rooted here. And we'll just wait for this to check up. And we are passing, which is great. So Magisk has done its job successfully. I don't have any modules installed on my 6P, but you should see all your modules remain here as well after updating. And that's it. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any other questions or queries, feel free to leave them down below. Next up for the Nexus 6P will probably be some custom ROMs. I know there are lots out there, and we're going to be taking a look at some Android Pie custom ROMs apart from Statix OS, which I've already covered already. So if you're interested in that, I'll put it in the little info box in the right hand side so you can have a look at that there if you want to but anyways thank you guys so much for watching now if you have any other questions or queries please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section or better yet you can hop over onto discord and join my server and we can talk about all sorts of things and it's even better if you want some kind of immediate support there as well it's much better than youtube comments so with that being said thanks again for watching guys and as always happy flashing